Oh, I'll put it on. You don't have to. It's just her, her husband, her husband wrote this. He made this song, so I promise I would... He didn't do I the would... music, he just did the lyrics. I... Look, welcome to Howie Mandel <laughs> Does Stuff. I'm Howie Mandel. I'm Jacqueline Schultz, his and daughter. Bri- Brian Cranston is here. Uh, uh, oh, my God. I'm going to put uh, I'm gonna put this on like like you have it in the back of you. You know, you have... What are you doing? My, it's it's the, like the respirator. Oh, like oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow, like, wow. Shades of Walter. Yeah. Yes. Shades of Walter. Yeah. I heard that they. I've been trying to get you here for a long time, a long time, and I, I did, just got lost. I know, but I, I did a lot of. Place. I did a lot of preparation for this particular. Uh, for you, really? Yeah, but I've been preparing for a long time, and we were gonna we we're gonna promote. And I guess I'll start. We were gonna talk about the uh, the final episode of. Uh, Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. You were going to promote it. Yeah. I hear it did well. It did very well. Seven years. Seven years. Yeah. I, I prepared for that. I have nothing else to very ask Very good. You. That's it. That's done. It's been You're great. done. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you, you are amazing. Do you remember the first time you and I worked together, kind of worked together? I think, was it a charity poker tournament? You just said on the last episode that you do this every single time you are with someone that you say, do you remember the first time we worked together? Cause you don't, and you wait and see what they say. <laughs> if I have a, if I have a certain You system, told everyone last time. If I have a system. You have a system. You don't share it. Maybe if I he asks that, I'm just letting you know, you can make up anything. He has no idea the first time that. I don't do any yeah. prep. I'm known for not doing any prep, but I do remember it, but it wasn't charity. I actually, it's good you're wearing a headset cause I have tape of it. You do? Yes. Want to see? Yes. Okay. What we'll see if I now? remember it like you remember it. I, it wasn't charity. It was a TV show. There's Dave Foley. Remember okay. Dave Foley yes. from News Radio and Kids in the Hall. That's right. Celebrity Poker Showdown. Do you remember who we played with? Peter Dinklage. Maybe. Watch. Let's let's <laughs> Jason introduce. Let, let, let's uh, roll the first one. Roll the first. Thank roll. you so much. That Here we go. Wonderful. Thank you all. Go a little further. I deserved it. Um, till well, till he's introducing the. Oh, here we go. Here's the first guest. Oh, no, ba- no ah. go, go, go back, back up till he brings us out in order. Oh, that, that, meat loaf. You're, you're ruining the thing. Yes. Back it up. <laughs> if, I, if I recall correctly, let me just think of it. Oh, there's the first one out. This is in that effort playing for the Mum Foundation, Stephen Collins. Yeah, Stephen Collins. Oh, he went from seventh heaven to hell. Yes, he, he did. But He's canceled. Yes. Wait, stop it, stop but it. But I have a story about him. Okay, okay, go ahead. I had a very good experience with him. I had worked with him before. And Obviously, you didn't babysit for him. No, okay. did not. Okay, and I was uh, I I had parts that he didn't care for. What do you mean? What you were the second human, choice. Human parts. You know, he he wasn't he wasn't into guys. He was into young young girls. Right. So I I had yeah. Anyway, uh, so I, I I wrote to him and I said, look, I can't, and I'm not going to condone your behavior. It's abhorrent. You know, you're predatory. Right. I said, but I hope you find yourself. I hope you you become the person that you would like to be. And he kept, he wrote me from time to time. He moved to Iowa. From Iowa, he started studying um, meditation and inner peace. And he went to, I think it was India and became like a, like a, a shaman of inner peace and, and, tranquility and trying to spread that word and now he's that's what he does he completely left the world he knew and i think he did try to become a better person and you think that's because of you because of you yep (laughs) that's amazing let me tell you a story about what i did for this person i changed him it was all me it's (laughs) a damn shaman it's not at all but that's the thing if you are and and we should just if you are wayward in your life if you are struggling. Just come to me. Yeah. <laughs> I can straighten you out. One letter sent him from young That's all it takes. Yeah. I've been India. I've been writing to Putin, been writing to Trump, I've been writing to all these people. So what you're Change saying is ways. your your uh your track record is not great. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? Oh my god, it's terrible. Too bad you never met Epstein. Yeah, yeah. God. you're assuming. Why I think there was no I hope Maybe there. I should assume. <laughs> What's a mustache for? It's uh, it's because I wasn't shaving it. Uh, I had. It. <laughs> 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 so, 
Uh, you know, just fooling around. I like to grow facial hair uh, between jobs so that I can... Oh, it's not for a particular job. Not for a particular job. You're not playing the Pringles guy. No, but I could. Is, are they hiring? Are they I doing that movie? It's a good part. You could do anything. <laughs> Isn't that funny? When you drive by and you see the movie trucks all, all around Los Angeles and you wonder, why wasn't I up for that? You don't even know what it is. It's a mayonnaise commercial. Isn't was, the Pringles ad that right now? What? The Pringles ad is that. It's an actor that someone says you could play the Pringles guy because he has a mustache. Oh, it was Ma uh, Pratt. Chris Pratt. Is that what it was? I think it was yeah. Chris Pratt. Didn't see it. Yeah. Played, I think it was a Super Bowl ad, Chris, I think Chris it was. Pratt. Anyway, let's see who else. It's not only the guy that you. Let's yeah. see how you've changed each and every one of our lives. <laughs> Next up, <laughs> Brian Cranston. There you are. Look changed at that. Changed his life. Look at how. Look at you. Oh, look how you facial hair. And Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. How did you change his life? Him? So stop yep. this right now. So our, um, uh, the guy that, uh, one of our producers here, Jeremy, I said, do you have the tape? Because he's coming in. And he said, wow, Brad Williams has been around for a long time. No. Do you know the comic Brad no. Williams? Uh, yeah. Jeremy. <laughs> That's yeah. what Jeremy said. Jeremy. Did what? you know you were gonna get called it, out? Uh, no, but that slipped. I knew that wasn't him. No, no you didn't. <laughs> No, you didn't. Cover your Brad ass now. Williams does not age. Is, Brad Williams is a is a very funny comic who's been on this uh, podcast, but that's Peter Dinklage, and he's a little person. Because of you, I wrote him a letter. <laughs> <laughs> he was when when Brian met him, he was five ten, and he went, "You are, yeah. <laughs> I wish I was half the man you were." Yes. And he yeah. went off. Have you given it some man you thought? Are. I just said, have you given it some thought? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing what you've done. Just And then I want to know what this letter was. The next guy coming out. Meatloaf. That was a, a really, I don't know what you wrote. But I, I wrote to him, I said, died. can you give us a little side with it? Is there a mashed potato with you? Is there a vegetable? <laughs> it's all just meatloaf. It's a lot of protein. It is. Yeah. And then it was me. You don't have to play. Rest in peace, mate. He was a good guy. He was a good he, guy. I was yeah. friends with him. What he did he a, do for you? How did, how did he make you the person you are today? Um, he had seen me. This is great because I, I, you are, uh, pr in, my, in my books, one of the finest actors of our generation. You really are. And uh, I, I look up to you. I love everything you do. I loved, And I've watched just about everything you've done. And uh, I think I told you that. And uh, I said, do you have any advice? Because I used to act, you know, I, would, yeah. I, I, I still would hey. if, you, if you had me, but I was on St. Elsewhere. St. And Elsewhere. And yeah. I will just say right now, he said, I said, as an actor to pursue these parts, what it, and based on your letter, I've gotten into podcasting. <laughs> so without you, I wouldn't be here not have doing you anything. Have considered scripted. a podcast? Yes. <laughs> and here I am. Thank Working you. Working for free. So a shaman, <laughs> a dwarf, and a podcaster, and a dead person. Walk All into a bar. All because of you. <laughs> All because people don't know how much the he impact. Has, yeah. The impact that Brian and Cranston has. Just the, the reach is unbelievable. How is the mezcal going? Mm, dos hombres. Dos hombres. Do dos you know hombres. about this? No. He has, he has his own. We should put up a, let's put up a, him and his partner. I'll bring some in for you. What? Do you like mezcal? Um, I don't you really don't drink, but drink. the fact that you were here and you didn't bring it. Oh, I'll write a letter. <laughs> <laughs> it, this is, so how does one launch a, an alcohol brand? You know, mm. I don't really know. I'm outside of the realm of alcohol. I, I know, would I know uh, my cursory, uh, cursory, is cursory? Cursory. cursory? I'm Canadian, I don't uh -huh. know how, how to say anything. But um, I, I know that uh, George uh, Clooney has made yeah. a billion dollars. Yeah. Is that what drove you to? <laughs> no, actually what drove us to uh, make Dos Hombres with Aaron Paul as the other hombre is that three years after the end of Breaking Bad, we missed seeing each other and we don't play golf. Had we played golf, we wouldn't have a mezcal. I Truly, because well, listen, when, when guys get together, they feel they have to justify it. Whereas women who are so much more mature and smarter than we are, when you miss someone, you see someone, you, you go see them, right. and you don't feel you have to justify 
having lunch with someone or, or, or just being with them. But we do. Men feel like, well, are we going to watch the game? Are we going to play golf? Are we going to do a podcast? Are we going to go into business together? Are we going to, we, we think in those terms. So I you said, you said, Aaron, I want to, let's, uh, let's hang out. He said, not without a reason. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, we, we talked about maybe it's, we can do something on stage or something. It was a little too early. Three years after the end of Breaking Bad. So we needed to let the characters die. Let them, let them let, get some distance. And uh, so we thought, he said, what about Mezcal? And I thought, that's that. Now that is a terrible idea. And uh, because when I was young in high school and college, uh, I played poker with my friends and we'd get together and everyone would, you'd, you'd, you'd have a case of beer and a spirit every time we got together, once a month. And uh, the spirit was a surprise to whoever was hosting. And one time it was a mezcal and there was a dead worm at the bottom of this plastic bottle that cost $3.95. And it smelled like uh, industrial carpet cleaner. And it tasted like industrial carpet cleaner. You're painting a beautiful picture. Yes, I know. And it was it was it was repulsive. So when he then decades later he says we should do a mezcal, I th I went back there and I went, that is just no. But we went to a mezcal bar in New York City. We tasted a bunch. We I got excited about it. I I had no idea that I had shut out this whole spirit out of my life. And it was it's beautiful, so refined. Uh, it, it the taste is. It's fantastic. So we went down to Oaxaca, and we said, "Let's let's set this up." And there are people who can give you tours for if you're interested in entrepreneurship in that field. And so we did, and uh, we toured around for a, a week. And every day we went out and we tried maybe a total of ninety to a hundred different mezcals. And uh, then you don't drive home after that. No, we we had a driver. Yeah, yeah. Do you spit it out like if you're trying ninety kind mezcals? Of, yes, you kind just of. take a little sip. And then, you, and then you savor that, it's either right or it's wrong, set it aside, make your notes, take a bite of a, of a cracker or something and a sip of water, and then take another sip of something else. And you're, it was usually too strong for me or too weak for Aaron. I like something that's inviting. I don't wanna be attacked when I drink, uh, but he loved a real peaty scotch that he said, I don't mind you know, being slapped around. <laughs> I said, we can arrange that. You should uh, write him a letter. I, I will write him a letter. <laughs> I will write him. It's a good callback. We're just going to bring that back. Uh -huh. Anytime. Boom. There we go. I yeah. think you so need you, an excuse to hang out with me, and that's why you started this podcast. Oh, it was. That's very sweet. It, yeah. it was. She wouldn't yeah. see me during COVID because I'm in my 60s. You're right. And, and so she wouldn't see me, so we ended up. Uh, and because he's filthy. What? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe I didn't want to see you for me, not for you. That doesn't matter. But yeah. let's think. Of, it's not no, about that, us. No, I know the alcohol. Yeah. Mezcal. So you, but you go out. Wait, does all mezcal have the worm at the bottom? No, that was a marketing gimmick from uh, a couple of companies. They a thought marketing it was, gimmick. Yeah. It, does it yours means have the worm at the bottom? No. I, we Can don't want to imagine if you can't it. come up with a marketing gimmick for whatever you're selling. Like, who came up with like? You know, I don't know how we're gonna. Let's put a dead worm. You should yeah, make, you see, should put like in some of them just like a dead cricket. I don't want anything dead in the bottle because well, put them in live and then let let uh, well that's you know that's what happens. nature take its course. Nature, but okay, yeah. the point is that you guys are walking when you went around and you were tasting and making notes. Was it with the intent of creating your own? If we found something that we both loved, and if but we, doesn't it exist? Or you're allowed to take a taste and then give them a note to, you know what this needs? It needs a little more. Well, that's that's possible, I suppose, but I didn't have the expertise to be able to, to say that, or the, nor the confidence. I was new to it, and I was learning as we were going. So Is Aaron, had he done this? N no. I so mean, you're both new to it. You don't know what you're doing. Completely you're just new going to off your. Yeah, you've got feelings you're, about yes. it. And so we kept looking and looking and looking. It was always too harsh for me or too weak for him. And it was like a Goldilocks. We weren't finding it. But over the course of the week, uh, we started coming closer to the middle. He started realizing, well, maybe I don't want to be attacked so harshly. And I'm thinking, you know what? That nice warm finish when you take a sip, it feels really good. And so, and what about the profiles? Is it earthy or citrusy or sweet? 
And so we had to find something that was right for us, and we found Dos Hombres. Yeah. Is, is, uh, when you're tasting like that, that's not a sommelier, right? That's not a, sommelier is wine. It, it doesn't or is it have for to any be. alcohol? It can be for any alcohol, yeah. So you were amateur sommeliers, kind of, right? Oh, no. We're still way, way, way far So you away found from that. something that you liked. Yes. Did it exist? Well, it, artisans, the, 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 um, mescaleros, as they're called down in Mexico, they are, artisans and they make their art. artisans or yeah. moonshiners no they're artisans that they're, they're allowed and it's legal and they can make it anywhere oh, they really want. oh yeah yeah so okay you so you found one that you liked right and we talked to him and he his name is gregorio velasco and and we said we love this with this is the only one that we ever agreed on and we talked to him and he was excited about it because what they do, when we go to a street fair, you see people who are, make jewelry and they make candles and they make cookies and they make whatever. Uh, so do mescaleros. They make their mezcal and they take it to market and they hope that someone will find it and pay them for it. And they usually sell it off in big barrels. And They're called mescaleros. Yeah. I wish I knew that. Yeah. I wish I knew that when I was single. You know that now. No, but I'm married. And happy how, how would that help you if you were single? I just think that if you walked into a bar and you met a young lady and she said, what do you do? I go, I'm a mescalero. I just think it sounds cool. You make mescaline, you know, or something oh, they think maybe. Why do we always have to go back to like Breaking Badish? Because it's in the DNA. It is. So, okay, so now you say to him, you like it. We like it. Let's do business. This is a beautiful little town, San Luis del Rio. There's one landline telephone. There's no cell service. It rings on a post in the middle of town. And the responsibility of the residents there are if they are walking by, whoever's close it, it rings, you answer it, hola, momento, and you put it up on a hook and you go get the person that they're calling for. That's amazing, that's teamwork. Is there a picture of this place? Oh yeah, there's what's plenty it, of pictures. What's it's it called? On, so it's San Luis del Rio. It's up San on our, Luis del Rio. Yeah, it's on our website. Tell. Oh, it's on your website? It's on our website, yeah. The website is what? Com. Dosombres.com. Dos Dos yeah. And, uh, and the second responsibility is whoever is passing by, if they see the phone up on the hook, they want to see, uh, is someone on it? If not, hang it back up so someone else can call. That's it. It's a, it where we make Dos Hombres, there's no electricity. So there's you don't no say, like, is water. Gregorio there? Of course he's here. He's here. We, he's well, we bought him a, a satellite phone. Because we needed to get in touch with him at any given time. Oh my gosh! So is this does it? What is so? Once you say you want to go into business, he's already making. He's already that's making. That's him. So that's Gregorio. Yes, that's Gregorio. That's there. Gregorio. Yeah. And yeah. so, but he's not bottling it. So your business is really packaging and selling what it is and he bringing does. it to the United States. So that he must be stoked that you found him then and gave the publicity. You're his to savior. I mean, you've done no. more for Gregorio than no. you did for Stephen Collin. <laughs> I think so. I, yeah, maybe. Um, but it's hitting the jackpot because there's a lot of people out there that are making alcohol and yes. stuff. And then you happen to stumble upon this one that you love. Yeah. And agreed to boost it with you and publicity and packaging right. and stuff. Otherwise, that may not have happened. So it's that's the first time he's ever had a brand uh, in his family. Mm -hmm. is he's a third generation mescalero. His son will be a fourth. And he's never had a brand before. But... Six months into it, on his birthday, Aaron and I realized that without Gregorio, we have no business. So we called him up and wished him a happy birthday and gave him serious uh, stock in the company. So he's- Did he cry? Now, uh, he did. In fact, the last time we, we go down at least once a year, and the last time he said, he doesn't speak any English, he said something and then we looked to our translator and he went, he said he thinks he's dreaming. That oh, what he's wow. involved in right now is like a dream, and so we. How all, does he ramp up to? I would imagine from what he was doing yeah. pre. Right. Well, no one owns the land, but they're all land leases. So anytime a mescalero needs more uh, farming land, they just lease more and more land. That's what is already that, what goes into making this. I don't. I don't know what. Why do you? Oh, what do you farm? It's 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 a, an agave plant called an esparin. Uh, which is Spanish. Like agave, like the sweetener? Yeah, but an agave plant. There's about 35 different uh, varietals of agave that you can make mezcal from. 
and esparin is one of them. It's probably the hardiest. You can farm it. It's very durable, uh, heat bug resistant. It does really well, and 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 very farmable. And it it's what is the basis of of uh, dos hombres. How He's long been doing it- this since he was eight years old. Oh yeah, they they yeah. This is it. And when he turns fifty in about another six years, I believe it is, he's going to retire. At fifty, he retires, and his son will take over. His was son is mandated? now sixteen. It's not mandate, but it's just part of their culture because he works seven days a week. We keep say, we keep saying we're, we want to send you and your wife to to Mexico City for a little vacation. Stay in a hotel. We want to you know. And he goes. Uh, he's very thankful. He does, and he enjoys it, but he gets back to work. Uh, so we're very grateful about his How work How many ethic people too. Uh, work on this process? Uh, we have about 50 to 60 people now in, in Oaxaca, Mexico. Was it a big investment? Uh, yeah. yeah. Aaron and I uh, personally invested. We, start, we didn't have any company start us out. We invested our own money in it. In yeah. fact, how, to this how day. How much does it cost to start something like that? Millions. So up until this time, this guy was just, you infused millions of dollars, which is unheard of. And what did that, what does that take him, like what more, does he have to produce much more than he's ever produced? Ever produced, yeah. Did he buy land and expand? Again, he just said he leased the yeah, land. Yeah, they, they leased the, the land. land. They just lease more land. And um, it brought it brought more commerce to the area. It's great. And, and we're a company... I believe in capitalism, but I don't believe in cap- greedy capitalism. I don't understand that I want it all and none for anybody else. I, I love to share it. I've been very fortunate in our life. And so we have an initiative where we sell merch on our, pro- on our, our site, and 100% of everything that we sell there goes back to that little town. So we'll That's put a link. Merch. There'll be a link at the bottom of this. Oh, those are cool. Oh. Yeah, well, that's it's great. cool. And so we have already, they've asked, the first thing they asked for is clean drinking water, something that we all take for granted, but they don't because they have the river, but they don't have drinking water. So they have to take their big plastic five-gallon tanks and go to a place and their filter, they had a filtration uh, system, but it was mediocre. So we put in a state-of-the-art filtration plant that now everyone comes to, not just from their village but other villages around and they come and they fill up their five gallon tanks and they hoist it back to their homes for their drinking water wow i'm buying some of this stuff this stuff is cool this is really really cool like i know you have a mezcal i didn't know that there was all these reverberations which are good for humanity and that's we'll put up we'll definitely put a link in your now why doesn't our merch look like that we don't have mezcal oh yeah And the truth of the matter is, if you buy a shirt from us or whatever, um, we'll go get a glass of water, but we nobody else. It's, yeah. <laughs> We're not really helping anybody. Uh, We're not. We can, uh, we can. Let's think of who to help. I don't really care about that. Dad. 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 No, is that wrong? Yeah. Yeah, it's terribly wrong. Well, well, that's no. why I have I'm going to write a letter. letter. Yeah, write a letter. You'll change <laughs> me. Boy. And next time it'll just be you and I'll be in India being a shaman. Okay. But okay, so and so you started this, it's about 2 years old it seems like. No, it's now it'll be about it'll be 5 years old in July. No, it seems about 2 years okay. old. I did my uh, <laughs> research. Did I did your I, research. Been, well, the truth is <laughs> You're I'm going to be on, No, no, I've been trying to get him on the podcast for 3 years and that's oh. what my research said and I'm sticking to my research. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh so is it is it profitable? Yes. Uh it, we haven't made any profit on this whatsoever. Because so what are you basing it being profitable on? <laughs> because we're selling a lot. We're now the number five mezcal out there out of in, in less than five years. And that's in the world. And it's going really well. So, But in order to build a brand, you have to reinvest. So every, every dollar we get, we reinvest, we grow. But it's not costing you anymore. No. It's, we, we have about 20 one or two salespeople in the United States. We have we we sell it in in England, in Spain, in uh, Dubai, in Canada? in in Canada. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, is the end plan the end game? Is it to like do what uh, George and Randy did? Uh, is it to sell it to a? Because I think that's a huge. 
somebody yeah. like Seagram's come to you. And yeah, the, there'll be a there'll be a sale at the end of the day. Um, it should be uh, in the next hour or two. Um, or feel free. We got a yeah. We got you can click on it if you want to buy the company. Well, then if there is a <laughs> sale, a, what do you guys do next to hang I out? I think they still uh, <laughs> rep the brand. Yeah, we would still rep the brand. You but, would have a reason to hang out. But at a certain point, when something oh. grows, 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 it's like it's too fast. It's kind of like what Robert Redford did with with Sundance. He was trying to keep it independent, keep it independent, he, pushing the boulder back up the hill. And finally, he just said, I just had to step out of the way and let it become what it's supposed to become. That's what we're doing with this podcast. Let it become. Don't yeah. push the ball. This, this is growing, growing so This is growing fast. too fast. It's too is it fast. too fast? <laughs> How do you slow it down? We're trying. We Our subscribe button is now scratch and sniff. Ah. Yeah. So if you handy. subscribe, your finger stinks for two weeks. Excellent. Yeah, that'll little. deter some subscribers. Well, we felt that I that was the plan, except that it is enhanced. Uh, oh, People love a scratch stinky and, finger. Scratch and sniff. Wasn't that a, a rock band in the 60s? Stinky finger? Yeah. I never went to a concert. If it wasn't, it should be. What do you mean you never went to a concert? No, I never went to the sticky. I oh. went to a concert. I didn't go to a... Sticky, uh, stinky finger concert. Are you a musician? I play the drums a little, yeah. Have you, did you pursue that when you were young? As a, Did you want to be a rock star? No, I wanted to be a baseball player. Really? And I And I was... I was that close. There, there was only one thing that held me back from being a professional baseball player: talent. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> if I you couldn't act like a really had good that one element. It Did you go to college on baseball? No, no. I I realized when I was in high school that oh my ability uh, has has not uh, exceeded my love for the game. Did what position did you play? I played shortstop, third base. Yeah. Do you, are you a baseball fan? Are you a sports Love fan? Love it. Love baseball. Are you a Dodgers fan? Big Dodgers fan. Where are you from originally? I'm from L.A. Born, and, born raised. and raised. I went to Canoga Park High School. Wow. Oh, you're a Valley West, kid. West San Fernando Valley, yeah. Wow. So the dream of acting was not first and foremost. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, real to me because my parents were both actors. And the typical actor career where it was... Up and down and down and down. Oh, and uh, oh, down and up and down and down and down, and it it um, it was un it unstable to you know understand. When did you feel like you have made it? Like this is it. I'm here. Uh, I felt that I made it when I was 25 years old, and I had been working professionally off and on when I was 23 for two years. So when I was 25, I got hired on a soap opera in New York and I'm, I had to move from here to New York. And it wasn't necessarily the, the job itself. There was just something it felt like I crossed a threshold that I felt like, oh, I can do this and I, I can do this for a living. And that has been my most um, proudest uh, successful uh, I guess dream that that has occurred for me in my 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 career is to is to say at 25 I I've only acted uh, for a living and now I'm 60 I'll be 68 next month 68 yeah yeah me too I'm 68 now we're yeah. almost the same yeah. you're t you're tall for your age though right <laughs> I'm tall for my age no I don't am I I've, I've shrunk a little bit I, don't I used know. to be six foot now I'm like five eleven I used to be six four wow mm hmm I wash in really hot water, though, yeah. and I dry. Yes. If I would just let myself out to dry. Air dry. If air you're just dry. air dry, then I'm air dry. Yeah, put you on the line. But you are amazing. Do you do you adhere to a, because uh, I, I got into acting totally by accident, you know, with uh, on, on St. Elsewhere, and I was surrounded by great actors and writers and directors and Bruce Paltrow, who is the executive producer of yeah. that, told me, you know, I thought they made a mistake. When, just by hiring me because I had gone to MTM because I had started doing okay as a stand-up comic and the natural progression was a sitcom yeah and the casting person there asked me if I can act I said I don't know they had me read these sides and I got that part but I'd, I've never been to acting school he said this is the best acting school did you study acting or like you are so 
fucking good at every character. I mean, you're, you don't have, there's not a Brian Cranston lane. You know, there's a lot of actors that we all love. That Which is crazy because I feel like most actors get stuck in one lane. Usually they're known as like one character and they can't really pivot or like the audience yeah. won't let them pivot. And that hasn't been the case for you. It's uh, purposeful because uh, after I left, well, after uh, Malcolm in the Middle ended its seven year run, uh, I was offered a couple pilots to play a sweet, silly, goofy dad. And I thought, hmm, I just did that for seven years. It would be, you know, derivative of myself. And so but that's no. a hard paycheck to turn down. Oh, I, I never did it for the money. I don't even know what I make when I work. I honestly well, don't. I'll just tell you this podcast, we're paying you shit, nothing. <laughs> did you not know that? I, no, think I didn't we still know that. have a Taco Bell um, but it gift card in the back. It doesn't. Oh, 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 that's that's something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I my but you but you are a, a responsible husband and father. Yes, I and am. homeowner. So you would uh, to no, say no to work, regardless of how much it was. Somebody is offering you. You knew that you were getting paid steadily. Right, but if by if you were on a network show for seven years and you haven't saved enough money to sustain you for quite a while, you're spending too much. You know I that have to that's say a, you're an oddity for doing that. I don't you know. know that I am. Am I, you think? I think most people in our business and in sports and any form of entertainment are, I think most people, I don't think we learn enough in this country about economics. And I think when people think they have a check and they see something they want to buy, they buy it and they don't know. I've always from day one had the fear that this is all going to go away tomorrow oh. and that every job is my last job. At this point, I don't care anymore. No. But but I, I did I, at, you're talking about, how old were you at the end of Malcolm in the Middle? Oh, I was 47, oh, 48. Right. See, so, so when I started Malcolm, I was 40. And I think because of that, I had learned, okay, what's more, what's important to me? I have a wife, a child, a house. I have responsibilities. So I'm not going to spend anything. I didn't, I was very frugal. And I saved it, saved it, saved it. I so was I like that. But I think you don't know that that's an oddity. You don't know that people in their 40s, just anybody outside of the business, they want to buy a house and they go, well, they go to their accountant and they say, how much can I afford? Right. Or how much is a mortgage? Or how much, they, they don't even understand and they don't teach that in education. And I think more uh, prevalent in our um, business where I think people are even more frivolous and less uh, cognizant of, you know, somebody's on a show, they buy a big house, they buy nice cars. You know, I was on St. Elsewhere I watched the first two episodes of St. Elsewhere on a black and white used TV that I had bought. I love that story. It was a, not a long story, but it was a great story. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there might be something more to that. No, that's it. No, that's it. That's the end. It's a short story. You still have that TV? I have some black and white TVs. You, I don't have it. Uh, he doesn't get rid of anything. He has TVs all over his uh, house that do not even turn on at uh, all. They're, I'm a whore. Uh, yeah. Are you? I kind of am. The yeah. reason you're sitting Can here- Can you not uh, tell by this This office? warehouse you came out of, this is all the shit my wife won't let me bring home. Okay, but it, this is a great facility. Thank you. You have, you, you have all the fun stuff that any any boy man would love to <laughs> boy, have. You are a boy man. <laughs> I am a boy man. I love technology. It sounds how. similar. You were saying you didn't want to take certain roles because you didn't want to go into the same role that you just did, but right. you had the same uh, similar fear about even- deal or no deal, right? Like you didn't want to take that role because of where it would put you. So it's just kind yeah, of- I didn't want to be a game show host because I wanted to continue doing stand up and comedy. It's the kind, it's the same kind of thing, but you have this breadth of lighthearted comedy to incredible, dark, relatable paths. I mean, just, it, it's, there aren't a lot of actors that have treaded the same path as you and where everybody, and she said it, it's, it's us, the audience, 
are, there's no question. It's the, the, within two minutes of meeting whatever your character, whether you're the judge, whether you're Walter White, whether you're, I forget the name of the character on Malcolm in the Middle. What was your character? Hal. Oh, Hal. Wh whatever Hal is, it's just accepted. Whereas I've seen other actors who I love and I saw them in a role and I'm going, uh, you know, it, it takes a minute, they'll get me. You, you're right there in that second. I buy, that's not Brian. I've never seen Brian. That's the, that's the best compliment you can give me. I know. I know. It really is because I, I You're welcome. love that. You're welcome. <laughs> Good night, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> uh, because I, I really want to be able to do that. Interestingly, the more you work, the harder that is. Why? To, well, because you, you go, well, no, that's too much like that character, and that's too much like... So you have to keep looking, un, un, you know, pick up every rock to find little... Um, idiosyncrasies that that could uh, fit a different character that is unique and so the more you work the harder that is to find because you you're using them up speaking of the more you work I think you are probably in the last decade probably one of the most prolific people out there there isn't anything that I don't turn on that you're not part of and whether it's a feature film whether it's a, a limited series like the judge or uh, I'm watching like how do you find the time, because I would imagine, and that's what killed me in, in the scripted world and in film and everything, they're so time consuming. You know, yeah. even if I sit for two hours and watch a movie, that's four months, three months of somebody's life. Yeah. You know, so I see all these, you know, or, you know, the, the judge, uh, you know, that was two seasons. Two seasons, your honor. Yeah. Yes, your honor, sorry. Um, uh, but uh, so two seasons had to be a crazy amount of time, but yet I see you everywhere. You, you, have you had any time to just do nothing? I don't do nothing well, and I'm, I? I'm starting to learn how to do that. I, you know, if, you're, if you don't have any money when you're uh, a kid, and you, you, but you do learn a work ethic that you hold on to, and if you get opportunity, oh, there it is. I knew that when I first started professionally at 23, that I would be in class after class after class. I'd be in every class. If I became one of the best actors in that class, I would leave the class. I would always move on to another class where I saw actors who were much better than me. And I go, this is the class I need to be in. And I would start from the ground floor again, and I'd work my way to the point. If I felt I reached the top in that class, I would leave that class. Um, but so that was a work ethic. And I would always say, there's going to be actors who are always better than me. There's going to be actors who are not as good as me. The one thing I can control is I can outwork them. So when I had a waiter's job, I would work every weekend every shift on weekends. So I had my weekdays clear to audition and go to class. And I, I didn't care about parties. I didn't, I'm like, let's go. I'm on this track. You said you had no money and you started, weren't your parents successful? No. 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 I mean, they, they met, um, Betty White had a, had a television show called um, um, Life with Elizabeth. And they, they met on that show and they were in their 20s. And I have a videotape of their episodes. And to see your parents in their 20s with great postures and youthfulness and energy. and Is that on YouTube? Yeah. What's it, so I'm, I'm going to see if I can pull it up. What is it called? It's called Life with Elizabeth. And what episode? Would, it was what, what, episode? Are they called the Cranstons? With the Cranstons? No, no. It's um, uh, something about the neighbors, uh, at least one of the episodes that they, they did together. Life with Elizabeth. Um, Betty White, Life with Betty Elizabeth, White, Life and the Elizabeth. Neighbors episode. Yeah. Oh, there's the there's the there's the Life show. Um, wow. And they met on this show. And they met on that show in 1951 or 52. Are your parents alive? No. Oh, no. Sorry. Thankfully, uh, no. <laughs> I'm just. Teasing. Did you have a good relationship with your? I had a I had a challenging relationship with both of them. Really? Yeah. Um, my dad was. Uh, very driven by ego and he was going to be 
a star actor, not just an actor, but a star. If it, for what, whatever it takes, that's what I'm going to be. And I think it drove him a little nuts. He had affairs. He left the family. I didn't see my father from the time I was 11 to the time I was 22 years old. I didn't see him. Oh my gosh. Right? So my mother, who was a sweet, fun, really attractive woman, but she was rather immature and naive. And having her uh, uh, be deserted by him broke her. She couldn't function. And so she started drinking and drinking heavily and became an alcoholic. And so she was absent emotionally, uh, but I was with her physically under her roof. I didn't know where my dad was. And we we're just there. But she had no connection with me intellectually, personally. She never knew what my grades were, what I was doing in school, what I was planning afterward. You know, it de depends on how much I wanted her to know about my life is how much she knew about my life. How does one come from this and end up so, you seem, I don't know you really, you seem to have uh, an anchor. <laughs> you know, I mean, we need our parents. Uh. You need me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you've told you me. You have to yeah. keep reminding yeah. her. <laughs> I'm but, very important to and you. And <laughs> you seem very involved in a good parent and husband to your daughter. I know you work with yes. your daughter. She's a, a fine actress yeah. also. Did your parents get to see any of your success? Yes. Was he jealous of it? There may have been some of that, but he quickly pivoted to trying to uh, operate alongside me. You know, here, hand me scripts. Can you get that to your agent? And here we, you know, he's constantly trying to, to uh, you know, P.T. Barnum it and uh, get in some way, somehow on his own. Oh, that might, that that might be it. Well, that's, that's Betty. Uh, that's Betty, but... Uh, that's Del Moore. There, there he is. There he is? That's, that's my, your father? That's my dad. Wow. Uh, not, that, not him. The one, be, uh, the one on the telephone. Go back a bit. On you the go telephone. Go back a bit. Yeah. There, that guy. Yeah, yeah. Let's that's, pl play that for a second. That's my father. He's got a high voice, and I didn't even recognize it. You know, uh, yeah, for fun, for free. Unless, of course, maybe they're good enough to be paid for them. Well, we wondered if you'd be good enough to listen to the jingles before Uncle Hubert listened to the jingles. I, I don't even recognize his, the way he speaks. No? It's so weird. No. That's... He was 27 or 28 years old. Wow. Yeah. What an interesting... And then later, my that's my mom. That's Where, my that? mother and my father right there. Wow. Before they were married. She is a pretty She's lady. She's very pretty. And, she, and it was fun. And they had energy and excitement. And, and it, it kind of made me sad watching that because it's, I know what happened to them. And it was... Were they yeah. married here, or is this what they met on? Is this how they? I think I think the story is that they met on this show, or else my dad had the role first, and he was dating her and brought her on. You know, say, like, do you know someone in those days? You know, ah, sure, yeah, she's good, okay. Um, and so they that's that's what they did. You come from good looking stock. Oh my goodness! Do you have siblings? Yeah, I have an older brother and a younger sister. Did they go into the business? No, neither one did. Are you close no. with them? Yes, very close. Well, and I think I think in what you were inferring before is that parents, I think is how I reconcile this whole thing. Parents are always teaching you something. And in the best of possibilities, it's what not to they do. hope you to become. A, a, a good person, a, an honest person. Uh, but there are some times when parents will teach you what not to do and what not to be. And I think I witnessed enough of their behavior in what not to do. I watched my father go off the deep end in that and get involved in extramarital affairs and probably drugs and my mother becoming an alcoholic. And it's like, what a waste. Look at those two, they're babies. Did it make you nervous to start your own family? No. No? No, because I couldn't imagine not being with my daughter. Was your wife an actress? She was. Right. We she met on an episode of Airwolf. Oh, Let's find that. Those years <laughs> ago. <laughs> Airwolf, do you know what episode that is? 
Uh, I don't How about know. him now? Uh, he's, uh, is that Jan Michael Vincent? Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. He's, but did you see him? It was like mm, he, yeah. he it was deteriorated. Sad. Jan was, um, yeah. Uh, we Oh, we worked on the Queen Mary on Airwolf. That's the part I remember. But I don't know what the name of the. But Brian Cranston, was. Airwolf. It, it's, uh, you only did that one. Oh, yeah, episode. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Brian Cranston, yeah. Airwolf. That's how is. the kids look up things these days. Yeah, we have this thing called Goggle. That's Is goggle? it Goggle? <laughs> is it Goggle, yeah. guys? Yep. Yeah. Just goggle it. I'll goggle it. Um, I was reading uh, before you came in. I said, <laughs> is that you? No. Oh. Uh, that's me. That's you? I, uh, I, I, I had this harebrained scheme to kidnap these ladies for some reason i don't even know why and one of You're the ladies saying in the in the show not just in not life. in real life <laughs> well i wanted to be authentic so in real life i did it yeah. so that i can say i had experience um and then one of the ladies that i kidnapped uh was has become my wife uh, see. The, let's see where is, is she? that one of the ladies you kidnapped no, it's name Stockholm the syndrome? she's is on the back you didn't think anything would go wrong here no, we had a plan. We had a plan. We had a plan. I want to find somebody to marry. It's a simple kidnapping. It's a simple <laughs> kidnapping. <laughs> How do you deliver that without laughing? This is supposed to be just a simple It's kidnapping. so true, man. I, I look at that. It's like, oh, my God. But that's what I said about your Horrible. acting. I believe everything you say. This was just supposed to be a, a simple, simple kidnapping. You're making it so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you resisting? <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> but is it? Are we going to see her? Is she here? Yeah, yeah she's. Now look, friend, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody get killed on the outside? It's because of you, not me. Now look, friend, you just take it easy. Now look, friend, can I ask you something? Easy. If you have an eye patch, doesn't it go on the inside of the glasses? The guy that you're talking to. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's oh, it. That was it. I don't know, guys. Uh, is that guess? it? You could talk yeah, to me. She's in there somewhere. Okay, we're looking. It's supposed to be a simple search <laughs> yeah. for a kidnapped victim. On goggle. On goggle. Um, you, speaking of simple kidnapping, that reminded me, I just was, I was just uh, scrolling through to see if there was any uh, news on you. And, and I guess you did a, a revelation on a Jesse Tyler Ferguson's uh, podcast that you were once uh, thought of as a possible murder suspect mm, that's true yeah was, and and was, uh, we don't have to rehash that but it, there was he worked at a place with his brother it was your brother you mm -hmm. worked at a place with your brother sounds like you're rehashing it <laughs> <laughs> she's got a point the owner disappeared uh -huh. and then he had left anyway so they they looked at him but the reason i'm, I'm bringing that up is because this weekend i had a similar did you i did my what? wife uh my wife fell i was in vegas my wife fell oh and sorry happens she fell and hit her head and her face and her forehead she had to have stitches in her forehead you saw her glue glue on her forehead they glued it but Ooh. um i called 911 this is the middle of the night she got up to go to the bathroom she fell there was blood all over the floor i picked her up i put her in the bed i got all these towels no but it, it kind of related to uh the story that you have and I, I put towels and there was blood and everything and then i called down to the front desk and i go i gotta call 911 you know, because I didn't know how to call from the room. Yeah. I figured they would call, and uh, they did. But then they came up, and they started taking, like, a crime scene photos. First of all, my wife is incessantly, all night long, watching, like, Snapped and uh, all those I don't know what that is. True that, crime. Like true, true crime. crime. Oh, the okay. husband always did it. That was oh, on the TV. Oh. They come up to the room. My wife, yeah. there's blood all over the room. My wife is bleeding. Her face is cut open. And they're going, well, where were you, sir? Yeah. I go, I was right here. They're taking pictures of my side of the bed. I kind of oh. felt like I, I re realized what it probably feels yeah. like to be. Have you been drinking, sir? You know, <laughs> what, what, were you in an argument? And then my, my wife, who thinks she has an amazing sense of humor, when she came back, her eye is, her whole face is swollen and black and closed. And <clears throat> we go back to the hotel after we left the hospital and we're opening the door. Another couple comes out of their room and she goes, as they pass, she goes, I promise I'll be a good girl, oh. Howie. I will never do that again, and that that's not fun. Yeah, <laughs> but it, when you got you, when did you realize that you were a suspect? And was there was there any length of time where you were being? Yeah, uh, there was an APB put out on my brother and I. Did you know that? Uh, like this we, is high. We didn't know that. So, but at the time when there was an APB yeah. and you got. They found you, or had they found the guy before they found you? They found the the suspect 
as a couple suspects. It was a it was a guy named Peter Wong, and he was a cook at this restaurant that I that my brother and I worked at, and he was a miserable human being. No matter right. how kind you may be or patient, he was awful. And everybody who is worked, he dead? He's dead. You shouldn't speak ill of the dead. Oh, come on. Peter Wong, you could speak ill of. He was a miserable human being. And so uh, he would. we'd talk about, how would you kill Peter? I'd probably chop him up and put him in his own walk. You would talk about yeah, that? Yeah, we would talk. And I said, what about you? I think I'd hang him upside down and gut him and then strip him. You know, I mean, we'd all joke about how we'd do away with him because he right. was so It was supposed hilarious. to be just a, so a simple murder. <laughs> it, was it was supposed, supposed to be <laughs> just a simple, simple murder. murder. <laughs> like kidnapping. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so people heard you saying this. It, it, it was everybody say. All the waiters were all saying, uh, you know, just trying to release ourselves from, from this torment. And... Um, all of a sudden, he disappears. At the same time, the season was coming to an end. We were going to leave, and my brother and I take off on our motorcycles, and we're going to go up all the way up north and, and explore. And uh, Peter disappears. Well, Peter used to go to the dog trail. This is in Daytona Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. And he used to bring a wad of cash with him. He'd right. have a wad of cash. Go up to the window. Bop, 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 bop. Here's, a, here's $400 on that horse. On the, that dog and this one, yeah, and um, someone caught caught that attention, and it was uh, it was a honey trap. So uh, a nice, attractive young lady, uh, you know, started flirting with him, and he was like, "Oh, well, this is nice." And she invited him back to her place, at which point he was clubbed, taken all his money, dumped into into the trunk of a car, uh, and they uh, of an abandoned car apparently, and that was it. They they didn't know what happened to him. The homicide detectives discover him and they go, oh, he's dumped in the back of a car and who is he? And they identify his car. They, they find out where he works. They go in. My brother and I had left maybe four days ago. Perfect. And <laughs> they come in and they say, uh, Peter Wong has been murdered. And we're like, oh my God, is there anybody here who talked about uh, possibly harming Peter in any way? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, yeah. And they, uh, well, we were joking. Anybody who's not here anymore, uh, who's not in town. Well, the Cranston, Cranston brothers. <laughs> or my, you know. Oh. And so they gave the description of our motorcycles and where we were heading. And that's they, truly they a case to to us. of being in the wrong place at the right time. Wow. I'm going to write a letter. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just thought of that. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it is. I, my son almost got, uh, had a similar thing. Oh, really? Yeah, there was this actress who uh, liked my son and uh, when he was younger. My son's right here. Alex, do you remember this story? I, I almost got implicated, too. Yeah, of course I remember the story. <laughs> you were almost can arrested. I mention, can I mention her name? Yeah, she's yeah. talked yeah, about she's it before. Talked about it. She's talked about it before. Scout. Yep. Okay. What's her uh, What's her full name? Scout Taylor Compton. S Scout Taylor Compton. You know, have you ever worked with her? She's in like the star of like the Halloween movie. She's She's a oh. horror. A horror. A scream. She uh, liked him at at, at, the, at the time that they were friends and close. She ran away from home. Oh. And she was a minor, and they knew that he had contact with her because there was postings of them being together and the FBI started searching her out. Um, I, I think she, there was, they found uh, plane tickets and they were, she was, she wasn't with him, but they were calling my son, the FBI were calling my son to find, uh, but here's the thing. He had bought, my son had gotten into, uh, wh what is that, uh, they skateboarding? They were no, skateboarding, him, right? skateboarding so, and BMXing, yeah. Wait, but Sk they were following you without you no, knowing No, 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 right? this is, let me yeah. tell the whole story. He, no. he got into off-road, this is, we didn't know. He got into off-road skateboarding, you know, where he would go down hills and yeah, stuff. streets. I bought yeah. him a skateboard. He broke it. This is all happening simultaneously. He broke the skateboard. He asked me to give him a new skateboard. I said, I'm not going to get you a new skateboard. Let's try to fix it. It was just cracked. So we go to Home Depot. We have no idea that we are being followed by the FBI. We go, wow. me and my son go to Home Depot. I buy 
six rolls of gaffer's tape that I'm gonna wrap the board in. <laughs> and he said he wants to make moguls to jump yeah. in, in the paths. So we buy two shovels <laughs> and six rolls of gaffer's tape. It was duct tape. Okay, yeah. I don't know. I'm okay. gaffer, I was just, yeah. I'm speaking to an actor. I know it is, yeah. Yeah, duct tape. And shovels. And two shovels. Any burlap bags and like No, just plastic, shovels, just you know, shovels. No. So we were followed. And it, as it turns out, somebody I know said, you know, you're being tailed right now. And as luck would have it, how did that end? We didn't get arrested. They said no, it's they, the Cranston they, they, brothers. He, <laughs> they told you that we have to, they're outside our house on the property on the street waiting for us. And it was going to be... Um, like an hour before they put out the Amber Alert and starts and saying you're involved. They were threatening to hurt your name. And then she showed up on a driveway. Didn't you say like you had, you knew where she was, didn't you? I didn't know where she was. She But was, you were in contact with her. She reached out to me on a MySpace and said, you know who I am, I need your help. And they thought I was setting that all up. Wow. Oh. So I know what your life is like. <laughs> Persecuted, yeah. I, uh, we also met, you were here doing a, a, a Common Friends uh, podcast. You were doing Jason Alexander's podcast. Yes. And I had shown you. I don't think he's very common, though. I think he's extraordinary. He also is tall for his age. <laughs> I wrote a letter. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing what people, <laughs> what people, how he changes people. Mm -hmm. But uh, you were, I, I was showing you our uh, technology, you know, our partners here with the, yes. the hologram, the right. proto hologram. That is amazing. Thank you. You're sitting right beside one of these. Uh, that's a proto hologram. And this is the ability, has the ability, you, you, don't ha you didn't have to show up today. You could have sat at home with your iPhone and been here with no latency in real time. Why didn't we do that? But since you've been here, Proto has advanced to um, not only uh, the ability to project things and send you all over the world and as many times, they have created a whole new AI platform. What are your feelings on AI? Ah, it's deep. It, it's troubling because troubling? there's... Yeah. Why? Uh, because um, there is... Uh, it's all inputted information coming from people. So if, that, if you're inputting uh, material that has been written, that's intellectual property. Is it not? But if you take... Let's say they take... Uh, your eyes and my nose and someone else's lips and some it's like there it looks like a familiar person who's starring in this movie but it's not quite that and they take a few words of mine a few words of yours and they just amalgamation and they have a, a new character well, for you the glass is half empty for me the glass is half full because I believe at our age and the amount of work you want to do that they can actually, and if you deal with the right people, and I think Proto are the right people, if you deal with the right people, you could be in two places at once doing two different things. <laughs> right. I'll show you what I did Look for you. What? What, what? Hang on one second. Is this dog real? <laughs> this is AI. This AI is just dog. a simulation. Hey, it's, not my, it's not my dog. <laughs> Whose dog Hi. is it? Did you see that? Wait, whose dog? Whose dog, dog is whose it? Dog is that? Where it me? It just came from there. It came from there. Did somebody leave the door open? Well, good look thing at that. He a likes rescue. <laughs> a rescue right in the. Do you like dogs? I love dogs. There you okay, go. good. I love dogs. This is a good one. You're beautiful. That is a beautiful dog. You are beautiful. It's like a throw rug. <laughs> no, it's a dog. <laughs> All right. Bye. No. Somebody, if you say that, somebody's going to write a letter. And not the same kind of letter. Oh. No. You gotta watch yourself. Yes. Okay. So anyway, the dog. Can the owner of the dog come <laughs> get the dog? <laughs> it's going. It's going. It's, it's leaving. It's leaving. You know what? Okay. That's <laughs> what makes this place great. <laughs> you don't know what's gonna happen. Well, it is. It's uh, unexpected and it's eclectic. It's nice. So the dog is probably anytime. having the same conversation. Yeah. Fuck. You know, he's he sniffed there? around and went, eh. Nothing happening in it. <laughs> this is supposed to be a simple podcast. <laughs> anyway, I want to show you. I did not. I'm going to show you something that they did with AI. The lovely people at Proto did it AI. I did not record this. I did not record this. Okay. I swear to you, I didn't record this. All right. Play that. Play it. Look at it. <laughs> 
I'm looking. Okay. No, look, you can. What I'm saying now was not actually recorded. You can see it. Everything you are seeing and hearing was generated by artificial intelligence. I'd like to take this opportunity to say that if you are ever lucky enough to have a podcast, you could never have a better guest than Brian Cranston. And I would never say that. <laughs> I would never say that. I didn't say that. I did not record that. Sure. That was made. And I could do that in any language with my voice anywhere in the world. Watch this. Do we have it in Japanese? Let's see if we have it in Japanese. Watch this. How do you know what you're saying, Dad? I said the exact same thing. Oh. Watch that reflection, Alex. <laughs> All right. Wow. Well, that, I mean, that's stunning. And that's still my voice. I did not say any of those words. That's not pre-recorded. That's nothing. They have my permission, and that's how they do it. And I got to say something. When I asked them to do that t t for me, yeah, um, and this was even proto that they recognize it recognized my face, and it said no, that's a celebrity. We we will not do that. And I said I had to go give and sign more paperwork than I signed okay. for my home to allow them to say. And they said, "What do you want to say?" And I just d dictated that into the phone, any language, all over the world, seamlessly in any time. So if you're doing, even if you're doing a movie, you know, or doing any of your series, the ability to have your character with your voice. Speaking in another language. Speaking in a talk, <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah. Well, but any of these series could be played <laughs> yeah. all over Asia and whatever. I'm just, I'm loving it. I know there is controversy. That's in, not what you were concerned about. You're concerned about people doing it without your knowledge and correct. without your consent. Right. So. But by the same token, the people that are afraid of that, they can still take, you know, images and things of you. Like they could take the Brian Cranston, I'm not talking about AI, I'm talking about just whatever anybody's fear is. I could take that character that was on Airwolf somehow and generate that and then you have to identify and go, that was me. Or by the same token, if AI is writing something, you gotta go, oh, that's, but you have a case if you can identify and show that's yours. That's what people are doing all the time in music. They're sampling music and saying, I didn't. Yeah. But as long as you have good control and you understand and. But that is the problem, isn't it? You're, you're trusting on human beings to do the right thing. But with everything, you you have, we in this business have given our images and our voices to everything. They could use, I don't, uh, how I know that I have, and I would imagine you even more, have been associated with products that I'm not associated with, that I didn't sign off on. Right. In other countries, I have seen my image, and even in this country, I've seen my image on brands, and I have nothing to, I'm not getting any money for it, and I have nothing, and I have had to, had uh, yeah. legal, cease and desist. Right. So that happens anyhow. So when you can control, at least control, you know it's that company and you know, and you make a deal and you trust these right. people. I just think the ability for us in our late 60s to continue to be prevalent, to continue to be someplace I'm not and doing, I, I sanction that is a, it can be a blessing. It could be, everything could be a nightmare. And it's all always, considered there's a ripple effect to everything. Right? Everything. Everything. You get a driver's license, you get a car, you're driving two tons of steel, you could kill somebody. You know, it's not as safe as sitting here in the room. You get into a car, it's dangerous and shit can happen to you and others. Right. So any piece of technology can have a negativity. Yeah, I, I'm just, uh, I'm leery about it. I mean, even in the language, Ben, we have language studies all around the world. People are trained to learn languages right that would all go away everybody who is involved in interpreting languages teaching language in schools and, and colleges and, and all over the world that industry stops i look at it for that i looked at a magazine last summer that was shown to me said take a look at this magazine there was two 
very handsome uh, uh, models. One man, one woman doing the requisite positions on a horseback and you could buy the shoes or the boots and having coffee and you could buy her bag or his sweater or whatever. And uh, I'm, I'm going, yeah, what, what am I? The, these two people do not exist. This is an AI layout. And you could never tell it was not real. So I will say to you, and I'm just being devil's advocate here, yeah. somebody prompted this. That job didn't exist. Somebody prompted whatever imagery they needed. Right. So that didn't exist. It's like saying like uh, the people, there were factories, you know, a hundred years ago that were making steam engines or the, yeah. ste the steam engine industry is gone because we have, you know, combustible engines. Yeah, I, I get that argument. So what I'm saying is those two models that don't exist, don't exist. But I would imagine more than two models and the photographer, the person that is sitting at a computer uh, designing whatever it is, didn't exist. So now there's a new job. I mean, we have to yeah. embrace technology and future. It's just a it's it's it's, a, an, it's another side. I it, mean, it I can see side. all the, I can see all the negativity. Yeah, I understand all the negativity. When I saw this, I'm not I'm not trying to sell you anything. When I saw this, I went, oh my god! I can now, at this point in my life, in in my 60s, my thought, I can embrace an audience that would never know who I am. I want to maybe do my act in Japanese and see wow. if you see if that works. And now I could hit a club in Japan and do a stand-up act in Japan where I couldn't even dream of doing that. Are you, you, know? are you actually planning that? Now? Yes, I wow. want to I want to do that. And maybe in every other country. You know, comedy is is hard because comedy is a uh, it's more than just words or it, there right. is a you know, I I me and Heidi Klum often discuss it. Heidi Klum is a very smart lady and a uh, really good business person. But sometimes on AGT, mm. she gets a reputation for not getting the comics. American uh, comedy is right, different Right, but than you know, irony yeah. is a, it's a really, you know, we, irony is a big thing in American. Right. In, in, in humor. Our humor. Yeah. You know, it, but may, not, it doesn't translate their own. Sometimes, irony. you know, she'll say, but he said that. I go, yeah, but that's why it's funny because he meant that, you know, when yeah. you, when that's not your first language. Right you take verbatim what somebody says. Right. That's like The Office. When you look at the two different versions of The Office, the comedy in those two different versions of The Office very are different. very different. Yeah. Depending you know, on the country. It, it, comedy more than drama translates, but yeah. comedy doesn't really. And it's kind of like music is a little bit yeah. different, you know? So that's, I'm just sharing. I'm excited about it. I think it's, I, I'd love to see the, re the reaction to that. Me too. That's yeah. what I'm waiting. I just, this is But not just old. AI. Technology in general has taken away a lot of stuff that we have done. Even as a teacher, I see, you know, my students were like, what's the need to learn this mathematical equation when you can just do it on right. your phone? What's the need to learn sp how to spell? When you have spell check, what's in the, there's no more cursive right. or learning how to tell time on a clock. All that stuff is obsolete now and not necessary because of the technology we have. And what do you tell your students when, when they ask those questions? Well, there's different standards that you have to teach anyways. And some of those have actually gone away since I became a teacher. Like you don't, I don't think telling time on a clock is actually one of the standards in kindergarten anymore, whereas it was. Wow. So it's interesting to see the shift of what we find necessary. But even in our business, I'm sure you're working on a lot of productions that are employing CGI and and different yeah. ways of do you know changing wh whoever your character however you look. Yeah. You may have said an actor may have said years and years ago, listen, if I can't look like that or if that person or thing is not in the room, then that's not acting. Yeah. You know? So it's all how we move. We, listen, it's happening. It's happening. I'm not selling it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's here. It's happening. Yeah. So how do we? How do we adjust to it? Just yeah, and exactly. I, I can't remember who it was, but there's a famous uh, philosopher that said that those, the the, the biggest um, <laughs> asset somebody can have is adaptability. You know, in mm -hmm. life is uh, to adapt and adopt, and we're all going. Our life is so much our generation what people are doing and how things are employed sure. and how you get information yeah. 
is so vastly different from when we were kids. <laughs> yes, it is. It's fucking crazy. It's, it's, now you could goggle stuff. Yeah. You just, are, yeah. Well, go ahead. I just wore goggles when I was young, but now you can actually use the goggle machine. Yeah. Yes. And speaking of which, that's the newest thing that Apple has come out with, right? Oh, that, yeah. That the, AI, that AI. Oh, the AI glasses? Yeah, yeah, but where you can see the world. So people are just <clears throat> crossing the street and swiping left and right. You can be on Tinder and on, oh. at Times Square Only at the fans. same time. You can oh. be on OnlyFans and walking through Times Square at the same time. Never Imagine been that. on OnlyFans. You haven't? So you should give it a set. try. <laughs> I, uh, I kept calling it fans only. And I, no, it's OnlyFans. But it's like a, it's like a, Porn. just like a, that's all it is? Well, it's I a don't hookup know. place. I don't know. I've it's never seen it. Hook up. Wait, you can though. Can you hook up from there? Can you like ask the OnlyFans models? Can you pay more to actually meet with them? Wasn't there, we had a Nobody's answering. I promised somebody back there knows. <laughs> yeah. Can you pay to meet them? Go ahead. Oh, my son. It's my son. <laughs> Can't anybody else answer besides my son? It depends on if they want to. You could, part of what OnlyFans is, is, not, is the chats are what they're making the most money off of. So you pay to chat with that model. How much would you, uh, uh, what's an average price of There's a- There's actors and actresses that are on there. He's talking to you. Go ahead, answer his question. I don't know that answer. Liar. Alex. Liar. Be <laughs> honest. I don't know, do you know what, how much the chats usually are on- How much is Denise Richards' chat? You can go on. Yeah, Denise Richards Denise does Richard. it with her daughter. You know that? I don't think together. Mm -hmm. Do they do it together? No, I think they Denise have Denise Richards lines. and her daughter? You know who that is, right? She's I know, married yeah. to, but their daughter she is uh, Charlie Sheen's daughter. Oh, okay. Right? Isn't it Charlie yeah. Sheen's daughter? Yeah. And so they go on this. <clears throat> it's a mother-daughter thing. And they, <laughs> and, and so. This was just supposed to be a simple, simple porn. <laughs> <laughs> but are they doing something like that together? Not, I don't think it's together. I think she asked if people would be interested in them doing something together and got a lot of heat for it. And so I don't think they do it together, Weird. but they both have their own. That's Collabor her daughter. That's a collaboration. There's, there's They're Sammy collaborating. Sheen. No, oh, we are Denise Richards slammed for collaborating. Oh, she did collaborate. I'm just collaborating with my daughter. That's it. Is that what the kids are calling it these yeah, days? Yeah, I'm just collaborating with my daughter in our underpants. We're collaborating. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> not the way they, oh, look at, look at. She's is very that, pretty. Is that the daughter? Yeah, she's the very blonde? pretty. Well, Denise is very pretty. Oh my gosh. Wait. Who, is, those two, is that Denise, Denise and, her and her daughter? How much would you pay for that? Is that a bad question? <laughs> he doesn't want to answer that. No, <laughs> no. we're All trying right. to get some heat on this. Anyway, you have been <laughs> amazing. We got, we have. You a, should write Denise a letter. I'll write her a oh, letter. Oh yeah, you could change. <laughs> That's it. The collaborator. What would you say to Denise if you were to write a letter right now? Do you think Denise Richards would ever end up in India? As a shaman? I, I would write to her and say, I put you in a time machine, and then you can have a choice whether you would have married Charlie Sheen or not. Mm -hmm. I don't but think. Then, but, but she wouldn't have her daughter if she didn't marry Charlie Sheen. That's a conundrum. Yeah, it is. You don't hear, you don't, uh, you don't really, in the course of life, in this day and age, mm -hmm. you young people. Mm -hmm. you I'm not that young. You're not, but a lot of people are. Yeah. They don't have conundrums. Like you don't hear that anymore. You don't hear a kid going, how was your day? Oof, did I have a conundrum? Yes, and uh, years ago we were in the car and uh, my wife and I were talking about a song that we heard during our honeymoon that reminded us of our honeymoon. Right. And we're going, what, what's it? it? It went something like this, that, that, it had the thing. And we're trying to figure it out. My daughter's saying, hey, I'll, I'll look it up, I'll look it up. I oh. go, no, no, I wanna, I wanna figure it out. Why? And she couldn't, understand why we didn't want to know the answer that we wanted to just kind of sit with it and see if we can figure it out and i think that is a problem now that kids kids younger generations they don't necessarily know how to problem solve no. they know where to go to problem solve right but they if they didn't have the device could they do it on their own could they manage could they figure it out the kids today 
you don't understand. I know. We what sound Brian like, and I. We sound like old no. People. You don't know. How would you find your way somewhere too? I know. Without it's ways everything or, on or your Google phone. Maps. We yes. had MapQuest where you had to like print it out. But, but you, you don't you under- didn't even have- You don't understand the joy in being lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is. We used to get lost. Why have we a conundrum didn't know what when you the can hell Shazam? What's going on? Let I don't even we, think Shazam is a thing a anymore. Question. Is it? Do you know each other's phone okay. number? I know. Yeah, I know his. You want to know it? I'll tell you right now. No. <laughs> don't give out my fucking phone number. I'm like, I don't know hers. Is I, that, yeah, it you is. You don't know mine? Isn't that amazing? Jackie. Right. You don't Jackie. know mine? What? I've had the same one since you got me a phone. You don't know mine? No, it's Jackie. Is that, Aren't you, if I press Jackie, don't I talk to you? Yes. You don't know my number. J-A-C-K-I-E <laughs> is your number. Do you know, do you know Alex's? Do you know any of your kids? No. And why does it always have to go, who do you like better? Yeah. I'm so, that's what she was testing right yeah. there. That's what you That's what was. sending us down do a you weird know, road. Do you know any of your kids? No. Members? Liar. I know Brian's. Yeah. Because we back and forth. Best friends. All the time. But this is what I'm saying is that when we were young, you either knew the number or you didn't have it. You don't right. know. You have to memorize it. You it's, didn't have a Rolodex? But you realize yeah, how this on. conversation that you and I are having right now, how so shitty that is old. to young people that are yeah. like, nothing sounds good. Like it's not, you're reminiscing, you know, me and my wife, there used to be a time when we didn't know shit <laughs> and we didn't have a place to look it up. Where are those good times? Yeah. There was a time where you had to memorize everybody's phone, phone number. number. I remember you also- Look what you're missing out on. They got into a fight. I had a boyfriend at the time that was starting his own business and the business name he came up with started with a Y in front. And they're like, why would you do that? You're gonna be last in the yellow pages. You're gonna be last. No one's gonna be able to find you. You start with an A and that was your argument. That wasn't the argument. That was the argument. No, yeah. the, the, the company was, you can have your way with my girlfriend. No. Which yeah, was a it. problem. You don't start that Capital. with a Y. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, we want to plug the mescal, right? So oh, cool. you can go to that. You can go to that. Uh, we have that, right? Losombres.com. Losombres.com. I'm buying merch right now. And not this. only, even if you don't drink, people go there, get the merch, and you're buying fresh water for the townspeople. That we've already done that. We're working on a, on a medical facility in the town now. They didn't have one. They didn't have a. What happens if somebody gets sick there? They have to put them in a the car and drive them about three hours to the hospital. So now we're going to have a, a, a nurse come in once a month, teach them CPR, um, you know, nutrition ideas, do some blood work on people, and, and, and also teach them first aid how to put on splints, how to properly bandage something. Because if they get hurt, uh, regardless if they work for us or not, it doesn't matter, it's for everyone, uh, they have to be able to know those, the triage. Yeah. So d- doing the good work, it's not about the alcohol, it's not about, you're doing the good work. And you're a good man, buddy. It's, it's, you can, are, this is the longest Can I've I ever- ask as a, hu- as a huge fan, is this never, I know I watch the spinoffs, but not coming back, Breaking Bad? Breaking Bad? No, my, I'm dead, aren't I? Not, but like, maybe, right? At yeah. the end, it was a kind of a maybe. I think we played it out. Oh, darn, okay. Thank you though, Jackie, I appreciate that. Your honor that. though. Your honor, back. your honor might. There's a possibility. That was amazing. Fingers your crossed. Your honor might. Everybody was great in that. It was fun. What it a was, great cast. Did you produce good. that? I did. You're a good producer. Yeah, I, I enjoy that part of it too. You, you, you want to have some say in, in the hiring, who, you, who you're putting around you. One more question before I go. So if you haven't watched Your Honor, you got to watch Your Honor, but it is an incredibly, and what blew me away even more it was probably my favorite um, series of the year when, when I watched the first. And then when I heard that there was another um, series coming out, when, you, when there's going to be another season, I'll be honest, I was a little disappointed because I went, I feel like they're just cashing in on this great thing. They're just like, no, it's enough. I always feel like they do too much. I agree with you. You, you know? It's so I went, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it. And yeah. a friend watched it and said, no, you got to, Howie. You got to watch it, and it was even better. It was it, it held it, and it was even better. That, and it, oh, it, the f- the end of the first season, yeah. without giving anything away, it felt like you you tied every bow that you could possibly tie. Yeah, and then the fact that we could still live with all those great characters, you know, it's not like any other show where they'll have new characters or a new right. location in that same location. 
with that same, based on that same storyline, how you could take it another level. So now I trust you. If there's going to be a season three, I'm going to be the first one clicking on it. Well, thank you. I Is it being do written it. right now? Yeah, it's being, it's being considered right now. And uh, so we're hoping, because I talked to the writer, we, we came up, he came up with a great uh, concept. What's it. his name? His name is Joey Hartstone. Joey Hartstone is yeah. brilliant. And he came up with a really, really good idea, and I gave him notes, and it, you know, that's the way it should be. We, we constantly try to make it better. And, collaborative, uh, yeah. like, like the Denise Richards and her daughter. It's very collaborative. Yeah, I get it. It's They're just, the same. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like that. But I cannot wait to watch anything you do, and thank you, man. Uh, you're, you're amazing, and I can't thank you enough because pro I don't know anybody busier just to show up to this and talk to us. I, I think mean, you're great. I think you are. I know, you're right. You're right. I know. When you're right, you're right. right he right. knows. He knows. This whole thing was just to take your likeness, and we're going to hang That's out with you again <laughs> another time. Yeah, you're going to see it. <laughs> we're going to capitalize we on this. We'll see you again. We'll Did see we you. get enough? Yeah. Very good. We got enough? <laughs> Thank you. And also, subscribe. Make your finger stink. Subscribe. <laughs> Let's scratch and sniff. You press the button. Subscribe. Uh, get our merch. Uh, do we have any? Yeah, we, we have a have, we, have, we a have a new have, drop. We yeah. have a new drop. And Stink Finger, the album is coming out too, as well. You got to get that. So many things. And the t-shirts. Thank you so finger. much. Great. You're great. You're having fun. Yeah. This is how, many, uh, how many episodes have we done? Like two hundred.